Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Friday. Happy Friday. It is Friday, the 25th of February, 2022. I hope this Friday finds you healthy and safe. I hope this Friday finds your family also healthy and safe, as well as the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health being met. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and the first responders who come to work every day, seven days a week if necessary, for the one purpose of saving human lives. Blessings upon those that pick up garbage to keep streets and sidewalks and highways clean. And those that make deliveries for our convenience of food and goods and essential things that we take for granted. Double blessings on the men and women trying to help and deliver the victims of child molestation, the victims of ch- of pedophilia, the victims of child pornography and pornography, the victims of child prostitution and prostitution, the victims of human trafficking and sex slavery, and double curses from the Most High upon the perverts, perpetrators, and profiteers who traffic in this human misery. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and mostly and importantly, children who are on the streets of the United States of America growing up without a roof over their head. And millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There's going to be a basketball game tonight. The New York Knicks are going to be playing at Madison Square Garden against the Miami Heat. Now, we've been talking about the definition of insanity. Insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. It's particularly insane when there's very little upside left to some of the players that you are continually trotting out on the floor. So, for example, The average age of a rookie in the NBA, the average age is 20 of a rookie, okay? Generally, the average age of 20, the rookie in the NBA generally improves over time until they get to a plateau, which is considered their prime. Generally, that's around 26 or 27 if they're still in the NBA. Okay, so they start at 20, they develop over time, and about 26 or 27, they're about as good as they're going to be. They are what they are. Okay, now, there are exceptions. There are people that never get to that plateau. There are also people that get there and still improve. Okay, there are people that do that. But it's rare. That's the exception. There are always exceptions, and exceptions, basically, in logic, prove the rule, being they are what they are when they're 26 and 27, they're at their prime. So, if you have players that are 28, 27, 29, and you're playing these players together, and you're getting the same results, it's insanity for you to expect different results. I hope that makes sense. If you're playing players that are between under 26 and over 20 or in that 20, 26, even 19, 18, you're going to expect them to progressively get better if they're NBA players. You've got to be a good basketball player. You've got to be a really good basketball player to even play on an NBA floor. Okay. In the Knicks case, Mitchell Robinson is 23. So he's not at the prime yet. R.J. Barrett is 21. Quentin Grimes is 22. Emmanuel Quickly is 22. Okay? Cam Reddish is 22. Deuce is 21. Obi is 23. Then you got, of course, Jericho Sims is also 23. All of these players are in the stage of their careers where you have, what do we call it? Upside. They still have upside. The Knicks, when they got Tom Thibodeau, had 
all of these players, it, the exceptions of Cam, they got Emmanuel quickly and Obi that same year, but they did not have Cam. They did not have Deuce. They did not have Jericho Sims at that point. Okay. So, but still you had six players in that stage of growth. You bring in a Tom Thibodeau and his automatic, or I think we know now, is to go with veteran players. Okay. But you have to also look at, of course, what your reality is. And this year, nine players that are in the upward swing and six that have reached their peak. Now, Julius Randle, and I believe what we're looking at with Julius is a guy that has reached his peak. He's 27. He's in his prime right now. Okay. He is what he is. Now, can he improve in decision making? Maybe. Maybe. He still gets four turnovers a game. But in terms of what you can count on, he's a strong rebounder. You know you're going to get that from him. On and off with the three point last year was tremendous, but that might have been his peak year. Because all the rest of the career has never been that high. The 40% he shot from three last year. But you can count on him to come at the boards, defensive boards especially. Very strong rebounder. Always been that way. Okay. Strong body. You could count on him also to be available. Very rarely hurt. His rookie, he broke his leg. I think that was a fluke. Outside of that, he's been very dependable. And so you can also count on him to turn the ball over if he's handling it too much. So he is what he is. Same with Evan Fournier. Same with Alec Burks. Same with Nerlens Noel. Same with Derrick Rose. They are what they are. In fact, we are all amazed at D. Rose at age 33. Generally, when you're past your prime, you cannot do things you did in your prime. Now, Derrick Rose, what he's different for him is he lost a little quickness, but not enough to be noticeable where people can really guard him still. He's still unguardable in his, for, as far as his quickness. He's still one of the best finishers in NBA history. He doesn't have the lift when he jumps as he did be, when he was MVP, where he was dunking on, you know, seven footers with two hands. But then again, as we know, that also contributed to the knee issue, right? So and he's still an elite ball player, but he's, you can't push him too hard as we already seen the ankle cause him to be out six to eight weeks, right? So you're limited in what you have. So why am I saying all that? The Knicks of tonight are going to try out Alec Burks as the starting point guard. If RJ plays, and, and he's listed as uh, questionable, uh, he's listed as questionable. D. Rose probably won't play because he's listed as doubtful uh, it, on an injury report. Nerlens Noel is questionable, but he's been questionable all year. So we don't know what he's going to be there or not. But probably Rose is not going to play. If RJ plays, then, you know, I saw earlier this week that, that Fournier was in the starting unit practice jersey, which is the dark blue jersey. And so he'll probably start. Plus, if Fournier wasn't starting, I would have think you're going to hear, you would have heard about that from now. I would, it was between Grimes and him. I'd actually rather see Grimes, but you know, that's just me. But so you're going to have Grimes in the second unit if RJ plays. If RJ sits today, Grimes starts with Fournier. You have Mitchell Robinson. You have, of course, Julius Randle. And, okay, and so that they're just starting five. And if RJ plays, you replace Grimes with RJ and Grimes goes to the second unit. Um, now, this is not the first time they played this starting five. Okay? So you have Burks, who is what he is. Fournier, who is what he is. Randle, who is what he is. Then you have two players in that lineup in R in RJ Barrett, who might be hurt, and Mitchell Robinson, who have upside. Okay? It's a nice mix. But when they last tried this earlier in the season, after 18 games, they shut down Kemba. They took him out the out of the rotation. The Knicks went two and eight. They went two and eight during that period. Okay. Now, yesterday everybody was touting on the media. Especially MSG media reps was touting when the Knicks start Alec Burks at point guard, they're eight and eight. Okay. 
They don't play well at Madison Square Garden, as we have very well verified <laughs> already. So this is not an advantage. So in a sense, they're doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Now, the only caveats to that. Now, when they went two and eight earlier, Rose was, was playing. He's not playing today. I'm thinking he's not going to play today. He'll probably come out against Philly because they got Philly in the garden on Sunday. Then they get a two day break and they play the same Philly in Philly next Wednesday. So I think that's a better time for RJ and, 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 and D Rose to really break out. Especially since now, as I mentioned to y'all already, this is very critical. This is the, for Tom Thibodeau, this is the most critical time right now. Okay. He's been in this situation many times, long-term coach, right? So, he, and he's been in New York before, so he knows what this is about. If he doesn't start winning games in this next five games, I'm not, I'm not saying they're going to fire him. Of course, I would understand, but I don't think they're going to fire him, but you're going to see Deuce McBride starting at the point guard or Emmanuel quickly because Tom is stubborn, but you're going to see more Deuce McBride. You're going to see more young development. You're going to see more Cam Reddish than or a Fournier, than uh, um, Neural is Noel, than uh, uh, Alec Burks. You're going to see more young players. And I heard, I heard Bill Pito yesterday talk about what, what do you mean, you know, we need to play young players. And he, and he, and he said, uh, what is Obi going to give us if we give him more than 15 minutes, if we give him 25 minutes? And I thought, see, he's speaking the company line. And I thought to myself, well, we don't know what Obi's going to give us because he ain't got that many minutes except during the COVID. And he showed us during that time he could produce. He was getting like 19 and 10. That's what we would get. Maybe we get the Obi from Summer League who was turning out every day. But we don't know. That's number one. And then with Deuce, Tom pushed for this guy. This guy's a Tom Thibodeau style player. It's Tom's mental capacity to not start rookies. See, that's why, again, I keep telling y'all, y'all keep pushing back. I'm trying to get y'all the real. I don't care who we draft. If Tom Timber is the coach, they ain't playing. Get it through your head. They ain't playing. I don't care who it is. Ivy, don't matter. Holmgren, they ain't playing. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Now, if you have Kenny Atkinson as the coach next season, okay. That's a different thing. But if you're telling me Tom Thibodeau is going to start next season as head coach and you're expecting somebody that they draft this year to play, you better get your head examined and go find, who, you know, something. Because they ain't playing. I don't care who it is. And y'all thinking Ty Ty? Look, all the John Calipari Worldwide West connections in the world ain't going to get that kid on the floor next year if we, if we, if we get him. He's behind Deuce and Joko Bias, as well as IQ. Are you kidding me? Y'all got to get real. Okay, that ain't happening. So here we go with the same thing. The only way I'm going to see, I'm going to tell y'all that they might be a change is if D. Rose and Nerlens Noel are healthy because Nerlens ain't been healthy all year. And him and Mitch Robinson haven't hardly been healthy together all year. So if we can get them two cats together to play healthy, and I believe Mitch Rob, now Mitch Rob dealing with his, with his pops right now. Pops is missing. That's got to be playing on his head. It's actually probably good that he gets to play some ball to try to get it off his mind a little bit. But it's got to be bothering him. And then they in Florida too. And that's where the Pops is missing. So I don't know how this is going to roll. But I think, you know, Mitch is going to play. He's going to try to focus on the game. To get it off his mind so he don't have to worry about it too much, right? But let's pray that Mitch Riles Pops is found healthy and safe, man. Because that's got to be hard for the young man. And his pops is pretty young. I mean, his pops is like, I heard like 38, 39. That's young, man. I mean, to me anyway. But, you know, Mitch Rob is 23, going to be 24 in, in May or April, something like that. So, um, yeah, let's pray for that. But see, we haven't had both of them cats healthy together very few this year. So if they get both of them, they get Mitch Rob and Nerlens, and you can you can split the, the five minutes between them. At the five minutes at the five between them, that's that's good. And if you get back a healthy RJ 
who was really starting to come into his own before Tom Thibodeau foolishly put him in a lost game and he tweaked his ankle. That could have been something worse. He was playing the best ball of his career. If he comes back and he's doing that, the ball is coming through him. Uh, that could, these could be pretty good changes for the Knicks. Could be. Okay. Um, but we'll see. We're going to see tonight, starting tonight. Like I said, this is an important stretch. This is an important stretch for Ted. He ain't going to, he ain't going to have the whole rest of the season to prove the same unit is worth something. He already had to talk. You already got Worldwide West saying, this guy's a problem. You already got that. Okay, that's already come out. So, Tibbs could stand up in there and, and tell about, you know, me and West, I don't believe the rumors. Until the day they hand him the pink slip, you know, he could do that. But he he know he only got a few games to prove this thing going to work. And then it's deuce time. And that knucklehead don't understand that he got the point guard right there. See, some of y'all don't believe Deuce is the point guard, and that's cool. But all I'm saying to all y'all is, we don't know until we put him out there for 10 or 15 games for sure, right? And I'm saying, based on my scouting of him, I think this kid's the real deal. I think he will end all our point guard speculation. If you put him out there for 15 games and let him play 25, 30 minutes a game. Okay? But we're going to see. Let's see what happens. Okay? Now, next subject today. What about Mitch Rob? In terms of his contract. Again, this is Mitch Rob's fourth season. He was drafted at age 20, the average age of an NBA rookie. The two most difficult positions to learn in the NBA is point guard and center. The center calls out all the defensive plays. The center is the one that t talks and get, lets everybody know where everybody is. Over the course of four years, Mitch Robb has learned to do that. He came in the league, uber athletic, young kid, jumped through the roof. And of course, his first two seasons, he was in foul trouble because that's how most athletic young bigs do it. Y'all didn't understand that at the time. Oh, he gets in foul trouble too much. Don't be stupid. He's 20, 21. That's going to happen. Okay, now last year in his third year, he ain't foul out once, I think. And he ain't foul, I think he ain't foul out this year either. He's learning the whole game. You know who helped him a lot? DeAndre Jordan helped him a lot in terms of talking on defense. He, he's really good now. Mitch Rob, really good. And we ain't seen his prime yet. Last year, he was hurt all summer. So he could not work out, could not work on his game at all. Prior to last year, he was doing what he thought best. The Knicks didn't have no good development until they got Kenny Payne. And last year, he was actually playing really good until he broke his foot. Okay, broke his foot, broke his hand last year, and he came back from all that. So now, we are seeing Mitch starting to reach his physical stride this year because of just getting into shape. And I believe over the summer, this summer, you will see him start to develop an offensive game. I don't know about a back-to-the-basket game. I can see him, though, developing a mid-range jump shot. A mid-range jump shot. I can see that happen. I can see him, and we've already seen flashes of him putting the ball on the floor sometimes. I can see him doing that, going hard to the hole from maybe 15, 12, 15 feet out with a dribble, taking one or two dribbles and getting, or usually one dribble and getting to the basket. I can see that being developed this summer. Okay, back to the basket is not as important as it was 20 years ago. But face up and hitting that little mid range and getting to, I think that's the next iteration. We ain't got to his peak yet. He's going to be 24 this spring. So we still got a couple of years of upside with Mitchell Robinson. Now, the Knicks have not signed him for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because Mitch decided he's going to you know, bet on himself. That happens and wait till free agency, or the Knicks just haven't furnished an offer. I don't know. Nobody has said either way, because nobody knows. And I like that about, you know, the brain trust of starting with Leon. They don't leak out that stuff. That stuff got leaked out the other day about where I was. I believe some people say it was from Scott Perry. It could have been. Or, you know, that, that was kind of a Bush League move, whoever leaked that, you know, about Tibbs, you know, in terms of him where I was blaming him. 
that was that was a Bush League move because I like up until that point they keep everything in house. They don't let nobody know what's going on and it's driving the media crazy. And I don't care because they could to me. I think they can think more clearly when they're in the in the sanctum and they got to worry about the outside noise. Because Dolan starts Dolan is one that will really react to the outside noise. Okay, and that's why I'm saying they got five games because you're going to hear the boo bird big time. Like I said, there's nobody that could boo. Or cheer like MSG. When the brothers and sisters at MSG start going off, that roof raises up and Dolan hears it, good or bad. And if they start blowing leads and getting beat at MSG like they were doing before the All Star break, you're going to hear brothers booing. And then you're going to see moves made. Like I said, they already had to talk. Okay? Now, I don't know what they're doing with Mitch Rob. Mitch Rob is eligible for $55.6 million over four years. Okay? Um, again, the way the NBA works is similar players' contracts is how they evaluate current players' contracts. That's up for contract. For example, Mitch Rob is a five. So you're going to look at the fives around the league. You're going to compare what his value is to other fives based on the same uh Production, the same amount of time played, so on and so forth. The closest ones to Mitch, to me, are your Robert, your RW3 over there, and our Robert Williams III in uh, Boston, who signed a three year, I think $39 million deal. And that's about it. I mean, because Capella's $100 million, Mitch ain't $100 million. He ain't had no experience in a deep playoff run or full season like that. Okay. Uh, Jared Allen's $100 million. He has earned it. Now he's an all-star. So obviously that was a good investment. I think Mitch Rod will eventually be a $100 million player, but he's not right now. So I think they could get him three years, 39. But because of, you can see the upside, that's why Detroit wants him. I could see them offering him four years, 55.6. So we might lose Mitch Rod. We could very well lose him very easily. Now, I hope, I don't think that Don is dumb enough. Now they let Frank Nilakina walk for nothing, but Frank Nilakina wasn't in the rotation. Okay. So, okay. And he was injury prone. Now that I look back on it and, and I, I like Frank because of the defensive upside. I'm a defensive love of defensive. Uh, I love defense and, and pro basketball. When I see somebody that could play on the defensive end, I want them on my team because defense wins championships. So I like that about him, but he was injury prone. Every time we needed him to show up or he got opportunity to step up, he was hurt. And he's doing the same thing in Dallas. That injury prone stuff is why people from your place, when you get that soft label, because they always hurt. Okay. Not having. So you got to be available. So, but Mitch Rob is different. (laughs) They got him in the second round. That was a steal. He's played four years. He's your starting five. He's in the rotation. He's a starter. Okay. Um, you cannot let him walk for nothing. You cannot do it. If you do, that's, that's grounds to get fired. That's malpractice right there. So I think one or two things are going to happen with Mitch Rob. Either he signs with the Knicks and stays in New York or it's a sign and trade. There's only one player right now that I see. See, let me first, there's a player that's available. See, there's a difference now. Not player that I just want from NBA 2K. There's a player that's available that's better than all of the centers in the draft, including Holmgren, in my opinion. And he would love to be in the New York Knicks uniform. That guy is Mo Bamba. We would get Mo Bamba cheap because he hasn't had a chance to play a lot in Orlando. Okay. It looks to me that the reason Orlando is making him available is because they have, they had to decide between him and Wendell Carter Jr., who they got in the trade with Vucevic. When they, they, they sent Vucevic to Chicago and, and, and that cost Wendell Carter Jr. So they got Wendell Carter Jr. I think they are going to decide that it's Wendell Carter they want since they had to give up Vucevic to get him. Although Bamba was the number one pick, it would have to be, I think, it could be a straight up deal, but it could be a three team deal. Um, cause Mitch would go, let's say, to Detroit. Mo Bamba would come here and then Detroit sends something to Orlando. I could see something like that. And I think Mo Bamba would be in that three years, 
$30 million range, 33, 39, 30, you know, whatever million dollar range. And so we get him, we get him cheaper than, than Mitch Rob. He has a three point shot. Um, he blocks shots. He's a rim protector. I don't know about his health situation. I don't know about Mo Bamba in terms of, uh, I know he has been playing sporadically. He has not been a guy that's been getting a lot of playing time because of different things. But I'm going to find out. Let's find out right now. In fact, let's take a look. I'm going to look at Orlando right now. So he's not hurt right now. Um, he's still, he's in the lineup. Let's see what, what he's been doing this year. Uh, he's the starting at the five. They got Robin Lopez backing him up. We got Wendell Carter Jr. playing the four. But somebody might ask, well, what if, why they would trade him? Well, Wendell Carter Jr. is really a four or a five. You got Mo Wagner and Franz Wagner that you want to play. You got Jonathan Isaac coming back. And so when you got Jonathan Isaac coming back, that changes everything. Because Jonathan Isaac, you just pencil him in. He's the starting four. Okay, so that's that. But this year, Mo Bamba is averaging 15 uh, points a game. Is he? No, he's averaging in the last 10, eight points a game, one block, seven boards. He's shooting 33% from three. Uh, overall in his career, he shoots 33% from three. So y'all want a three-point shooter. He's not a great three-point shooter, but he shoots them. Um, 68% from the line. Uh, his career is six boards, seven points. This year, he's eight, he's 10, this year, he's actually, actually overall 10 points, eight boards, 80% from the line, 34% from three. So he's available and he wants, he's from New York and he would love to play for the Knicks. So that's, if I'm going to trade, if I'm going to let Mitch Rod walk, bring Mo Bombo here. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Or I love to keep Mitch Rob. The thing I like about Mitch Rob, see, I'm not. I, I, okay, it's fine for God to shoot a three from the five from the five. But I don't. You know, there's got there's teams that's in championship contention right now and have won chips without a, a five that can shoot from three. Okay, so that's not necessary. You got to let a guy play to his strengths. What I like about Mitch Rob is if you don't put a body on him when he flushes that ball, there's some sort of force behind that mess, man. <laughs> there's that youthful energy and force that tells you, yeah, I'm flushing it on you. <laughs> and he could block a shot, as we know. So, nah, man. And then, of course, he's had a 20-rebound game again this year. It's not the first time. He had a 20-rebound game, I think, in his second season as well. So, and again, there is still upside, just like Obama, right? So I think we're going to be in good shape either way. We don't need to go into the draft and get another young center that's going to be in foul trouble for two seasons before he starts learning how to play. Okay? No. So that's, I'm just wanting to tell y'all, watch out for that. Just putting that out there if you got to watch out for it. Okay? But that's going to play itself out as we're coming up um, in the off season. But right now, we got Mitch Rob. Hopefully we keep Mitch Rob. That will be my first choice. And I think he's a championship five and he runs the floor and he's athletic and we still got two or three years of upside for him. And I think he's going to be that man. He's going to be that dude. So, so and I like Mo Bamba too. So we, I don't think we can go wrong either way. And I think we got a good shot at Mo Bamba if Mitch Rod walks and gets a better deal somewhere else. The other teams are already looking at him. So let's see what happens. Um, so tonight, Miami. You're going to see what happens. They could, you know, look, if, if, if D Rose doesn't play and if RJ doesn't play, as weird as it sounds, we might win the game. Why? Because then he'd have to play more Cam. Um, then Grimes starts and you play Cam. I'm not saying RJ is, is not better than Cam, but it gives a chance for these guys that are hungry for minutes to get minutes. Cam gets in the rotation. Um, and then you get Grimes starting and then, which I do want him over Fournier and then you have, but it'll be him and Fournier together. And then you have just, um, then you have Burke starting and you have IQ and maybe we see some Deuce, you know, that's my thing. I want to see Deuce play. I think Deuce is our answer at the point guard spot. I'm just looking for Tibbs to stop ruining his career. Like he's ruined so many others by sitting him too long. I mean, he did not help Kevin Knox. Right. And there's been other players that he sat too long trying to play these old cats to win now. That's the thing that's irking me right now. Him talking about don't skip steps. Yet he wants to skip steps and get vets and see if he can win now when he's in the developing team, a rebuilding team. 
that that's bothering me. I have to admit. But um, I love Tibbs. He's a defensive coach. But look, like I said, he needs some help. The Don got to help him. Don didn't do him no favor by not making no deals at the trade deadline. Even Tibbs thought he was going to make a deal because he said, you can't bring in a guy without resumes, without taking guys out. That's what he said. And where it is, he was upset that they didn't make no trade. So I'm not sure what the Don was doing right there, except I do know he wasn't getting the offers he wanted. And I do like that about the Don. If he doesn't get a deal he wants, and Tibbs did say that. And I don't believe that's coming from Tibbs' original mind. Like, in other words, Tibbs was a terrible GM when he was in. I mean, really, he was a terrible GM when he was in uh, Minnesota. Don't give him that title. So he's like saying, if we get a deal that makes sense, we'll do it. If we don't, we won't do it. That's the Don. That's his words. <laughs> okay, that ain't, Tibbs don't think like that. So Tibbs just trade all the kids and get a veteran grizzled vet. Let's see if we can win that, you know. But uh, <laughs> the Don's not going to make a deal unless it's good for him. And good for the, which means it's good for the Knicks. So he didn't pull the trigger. Um, I think some stamp stuff is going to get done in the off season though. The Kemba thing, I mean, like I said, that's not surprising. That was, he has to erase that problem. The next move has got to be a Burks and a Fournier. We got to get, we got to get Deuce. We got to get IQ. We got to get room for Joko Bidis coming up. We got to do that. We need Grimes to take Fournier's minutes and we need Cam to get Grimes minutes in the reserve. You know, we, we had to have that. If we could do that, now we're moving forward. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to, you know, we'll see what happens. Anyway, y'all enjoy. I'm not going to watch the game, obviously. It's, not, it's on ESPN anyway. It's a national televised game. Hopefully I'll be able to see it tomorrow night on League Pass and the replay and then talk about it, you know, after the weekend. Sunday, Philly. Again, in, in Madison Square Garden, got to deal with that. So I'll probably do a video over the weekend at some point since we got two games coming up, maybe Sunday at some point. But anyway, be safe out there. Enjoy your weekend. Sure.